Well, hello everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Christopher, and together with uh, these happy faces, we form Climato. The food industry contributes with 25% of households. Oh, the food industry contributes with households. The food industry contributes with 25% of households' total climate impact in Sweden. Fortunately, there's a growing interest from consumers regarding climate smart food. Yet, many companies face difficulties in finding, in finding um, ways to communicate their um, sustainability efforts towards the consumers. Climato offers a web-based application which allows restaurants, hotels and food, and food providers to calculate communicate and compensate the climate impact of food. In the application, restaurant employees perform CO2 calculations by specifying ingredients, country of origin, and the amount included in a recipe. All the data within the application is extracted from research institutes of Sweden's database. To communicate the climate impact of each meal, Klimato has developed a quantitative CO2 label. Labels are obtained directly through the application and is presented to the final consumer via a menu or a website. Additionally, users retrieve monthly progression reports. Um, these reports present the organization's total food-related CO2 impact, how it has developed over time, as well as other uh, key performance indicators. With the report as a basis, Climato also offers our users the opportunity to compensate for their emissions. By investing in Climato selected and UN approved carbon offsetting programs within renewable energy. So the purpose of the label is to nudge consumers towards climate friendly food choices, as well as to improve organizations' environmental profile. It is clear that a green environmental profile leads to competitiveness, especially in a country like Sweden, where sustainability is a fundamental cornerstone to um, uh, it's a fundamental cornerstone to good brand reputation. Over here, you can see our story. We launched our application in November last year, and since then, we have contracted 15 paying customers, ranging from hamburger chains to hotel chains, to Sodexo. So right now, we have recognized the demand on the market and we want to scale up. The next step for us is to further expand into Scandinavia and the European markets, as well as to complete automatizations of all our services and provide a digital onboarding process. This will enable us to reach and maintain 100 paying customers. We want to establish a global climate industry index for food so we can ultimate so we can um, so we can make a big difference together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello, I am Islam, the founder of Lubinta. Young startup want to change the plant based routine in Europe. We have a problem today. 70% of plant-based protein consumed in Europe is imported soy. And why is that bad? Because it contributes to cutting down the rainforest and also long distance transportation. While we have local alternatives to solve the problem. To give an idea, the market size for uh, plant-based uh, meat substitutes is 1.8 billion in Europe. For a company like OMF in Sweden here, they started for four years and they have current revenue of 170 million kroner. Our solution is plant-based protein. One of the legumes is lupin. Most of the Swedes here, just like few, view the lupin as nice flower. It is, but also it is one of the legumes. High in protein, high in fibers. Good for the environment and also good for your health. We already in the market. 
we selling to uh, Martin Cervera company, but we started with the tempe. And usually it is like Indonesian uh, food, and usually made of soy, but we make it out of lupin. And our lupin is locally farmed in Skona, and locally produced in Buf. And what is coming next is falafel and also chicken replacement. Our business model is business to business, obviously. And we have good attraction since we started, like we're getting traction like f f uh, via email, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and phone calls from customers. They would like to try our product and try to continue with us because they feel that's like we are doing good for the environment. And also we trying to have enhance our soil uh, and reduce the chemical fertilizer use. Also, we have formal collaboration with Land Manning for sourcing our raw material, so we don't have to work directly with the, our, with the farmers. So we leave this for Land Manning, and also we have collaboration when it comes to R&D, and in the future, possibly for their food service. We are grateful to have support from businesses, B and uh, academia and also the innovation system in Sweden and in Europe. We are now looking for fund to expand our operation. We are looking for 1.5 million euros for marketing, production facility, hiring, and R&D. This is our roadmap. We wanna, this year, to focus on Sweden and 2020 also to cover Sweden full operation and then to go to Nordic and to the European market. And we have exit strategy after three years. This is our team. And if you have any more questions, please come back and ask me. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. All right. Hello, hello. Let's start with the question. Any idea what do I have in my hand? Sorry? Any idea? Could anyone say that it could be a blender? A new type of blender? And this is the one we actually invented. It's three times smaller th comparing to any other blender. It's three times more silent comparing to any blender. And my colleague will help just to demonstrate wh while I will continue the pitch. So th this is the, the new blender, the, the way we imagine it. And basically what we invented is an air drive. So it's a brushless motor inside with a magnetic clutch. So basically there are no mechanical uh, move, uh, attachment inside. So no, no noise coming from mechanical moving. So it's all uh, flying with, uh, with, within the bearings. It's also very smart. And the smartness is that we are able to recognize what is happening inside of the container in real time. So basically we can stop when there's no more need to blend or we can recreate very exactly precisely a recipe created by someone else. It also first ever portable blender, as you can see, no wires attached. You can do from 10 to 15 smoothies depending what, what is inside. And we are very much about the design. There, there are so many products that are nice looking and uh, like uh, Bang & Olufsen series, like Apple computers. And for some reason, we didn't have a proper nice looking gadget for diet. And, uh, and you all understand that, uh, that diet is very important. So why, why there was no gadget for getting the right food in, 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 in the form of smoothies, blended uh, vegetables, and etc. A few words how the idea came up. And basically, in 2016, I was looking for a new business opportunity, and uh, I was doing a lot of sports. And uh, w I realized that combining doing a smoothie in the morning is not go going well for me w w and when I'm waking up my family. So one morning, I was looking how my daughter was playing with a toy, with a magnetic uh, dancer uh, spinning on the top. Some ca somehow it all connected and, and, and the, the idea of a Blender started at that time, 2016. So basically, up to this date, we raised one, one point and a half million and we are moving into the production right now. So hopefully if everything goes well, then at the end of the year we should be, we will enter the, and people will be able to, to buy the Blender. 
This is our small team. Very, very talented people on team. Uh, just an example, our uh, firmware uh, IT engineer, previously to that, he was working in like medical drugs pumps, like doing the code for very, very precise electronics, also for nanosatellites. Uh, so uh, just, just one of the examples. We have quite a few investors uh, right now and looking for some more. We're working together with the biggest and strongest university in, in Baltics, Konos uh, Technological University. We have quite a few patents to protect the design, the technology, and the integration of this uh, solution into the surfaces like cooktops, like cook tables, and uh, etc. And why we're here today? Because people here today are all about sustainable food and sustainable solutions. And we believe that our product is, is one, of, one of them. Uh, you're making a food daily in the same cup. You're not changing any plastics as usually, which just happens with uh, smoothies. So, this is pretty much about what we do, and we are a food tech company. This is one of our first solutions, and we have quite a few more coming. And today here, we're looking for chefs, uh, nutritionists, and all other people who, who would like to get involved and would like to s help us to spread the, the news about new product coming. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Sofia Kocher. Uh, about um, three years ago, I decided to become one of the owners of Muscle Feed. And um, let's see if this one is working. Big white one. Big yeah. Can you help me? Okay, thank you. And the reason for that was really like being able to do something about the climate change and be able to tell my kids that I saw this coming, I had the knowledge, I was lucky enough to be in this part of the world where we actually can do something, and I did something about it. That's really important for me. And muscle feed, as you can hear from the name, we work with blue muscles. And the reason for that is blue muscles is really healthy for you and also very good for the ocean. It contains very high nutrition and uh, it's also very good for the ocean because blue mussels are farmed and they you don't have to feed them because they live on naturally occurring plankton. And by that, they actually bring the nutrients back to land. The nutrients that otherwise causes uh, over nitrification in the, in the ocean. So you actually solve one problem and you get a very healthy product. And uh, looking at uh, our competitors, we have a 10 times better climate impact than our competitors. We are a business to business company, so we buy blue mussels in big bags. It comes, arrives as fresh, uh, half a ton bags. And we have a factory in the west coast of Sweden where we process them. Um, I won't go into detail about the process, but what we do is that we separate the meat from the shell. And the meat we dry into a powder. And we also can process those muscles that don't end up on your plate. So we take care of what that what's end up on the compost today. So uh, we work together with the cooperation partners, and I will give you some examples. This, you can't, it's really bad pictures. You have to come and talk to me afterwards to see this picture properly. But we work with Taste together with the restaurant Jose and Pia. And Pia is also here today to talk more about that. And our aim was to do uh, food that you, that you can do at home. So a pasta with this muscle or a pizza with this muscles. And we also did some crisps with the muscles. It tastes really, really good. And this is another example. Uh, as you can hear from our company name, we originally come from making feed. And this is a project where we laying hens get muscle powder in their feed because there is a problem in organic uh, eggs that they don't get uh, sustainable uh, feed. So that we solve for them. because uh, Also because the muscles bring the nutrients back to land that the hen laying hens let out. 
And the third thing is health. New Zealand have a different kind of species of muscle and they export health supplements to treat inflammation. So if you have problem with your joints, you can eat blue muscle powder or green lip muscle powder to uh, reduce pain. And this is a market worth 250 million Swedish crowns. But we have seen that our muscle powder have the same high quality as they have. You just don't have to ship them to Europe from New Zealand. So that's a market that we're going to take. So we are a team today of uh, uh, about eight people, uh, mostly working as an owner or as a consultancy. And we're looking for you out there who wants to invest in our company or that want to are very experienced in working with health products or sustainable products. So please contact me or Pia here today if you want to learn more about muscle feed. Hi everybody, my name is Abba Fröling and I'm from Mikoriana. Just a quick look, how many of you have heard about Mikoriana before? Raise a hand. Okay, okay. <laughs> For the rest of you, let me introduce you to the magic word of fungi and how Mikoriana can help the food industry to create value from waste. So how are we doing this then? We are cleaning the wastewater from food and agriculture industries by using a fungi-based technology. So meanwhile, we are cleaning the water so it can go back to the industry again. We are also producing a rich fungi biomass that can be used in different kinds of products. So, for example, we have Ascofeed, which is a vegan, fungi-based uh, source of edible protein that can be used both for animal and for human consumption. Compared to other alternative solutions, uh, it's, our fungi has a higher consumer acceptance. It's FDA approved. The fungi has a fast grow and big versatility. So looking on the market, we can divide it into two different kind of categories. Those who want our process and those who want our product. On the process side, it's more about wastewater treatment and to make it more efficient, profitable and more sustainable. On the product side, we are now entering the feed market and fish food in particular, where we are now sending samples to feed companies that are, as we speak, testing our products. So we have met a high demand of bigger quantities and therefore we are now establishing our pilot plant which will be our first production facility, which will be in Bekamar, it's in Värmland here in Sweden, uh, where we will have large-scale production of fungi biomass. So for that we are seeking investments. So maybe you are an investor that strongly believe in what we do and in the power of fungi. We would like to be in contact with you. Or you are a food company that would like to know mo uh, more about wastewater treatment and how to make it more efficient, profitable and more sustainable. Or maybe you want to try our product. No matter who you are, we would like to get in contact with you and to tell more about our magic fungi. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, the story of Natufia started about... Left, right, big one? Big, big one. Big white. Yeah. Started about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, at this time I was a successful entrepreneur, but I wanted to do something, uh, something different, something more uh, meaningful. And my answer to that uh, was to buy an olive plantation in, uh, in Sicily and I started to grow olives. Unfortunately, very soon I uh, discover what you call the dark side. Pesticide, preservatives, additive, additive, you name it. And that really made me realize that, uh, that today food became a commodity. You don't know where it's coming from, you don't know who make it, and most of the time you don't even know what is inside this plate that you're eating every day. And on top of that, in the next 30 years, farmers will need to produce 70% more food just to be able to feed our planet. So how we do that? How we produce more and better without destroying our health and damaging our planet? Well, the good part is that people have already realized that. If we take the organic vegetable market, it's up with a double digit every year, 
and he's reached 80 billion dollar by 2025. But that's not enough. So what's the answer? For that, I would like to ask you to, uh, to close your eyes for a few seconds. Seriously, <laughs> it's going to be relaxing. Uh, and I want you to picture yourself uh, at home, in your kitchen. And there I want you to imagine that you have a never-ending supply of mint to do teas or to do drinks. And then you have cherry tomatoes and basil to do fresh salad. And that's all year round, and that's enough for your whole family. What we did at Natufia, we developed uh, a technology. Oh, yeah, the sun. The most exceptional aroma of the Now to grow an organic food in the heart of your home. Enjoy a never ending supply. So, what we did, we developed a technology that's unable to grow vegetables and greens automatically. We have connected sensors and precision computers that manage the whole environment, the watering, and the lightning. And the only thing you have to do is take a little seed pod, place it, and the machine will do all the rest for you. We have protected this technology with 18 patents. Uh, the product we get out of this machine have about up 400% plus vitamin, and we have tested over 100 plants as of today. Our clients are households, our hotels, our restaurants, but we also have remain recurring income from the from the seed pods. We did a 1.2 million fundraise about a year and a half ago. We are in the process of uh, doing our, our round A, uh, about 4 million. Uh, we already have it subscribed about uh, 30%. And in terms of traction, uh, we have one million cells in our pipeline, and we have a distribution network in the US, in Canada, in Dubai, and partly in, uh, in Europe. Here you can see the machine. And the thing I would like to say to, uh, to finish it's, uh, is that I think it's up to all of us as entrepreneurs, as investors, as professors, uh, to be part of this change for a better future. Thank you. Um, so my name is Michael, I'm here from Nightingale. So today people want to make healthier choices, but in my mind there are two major issues that are stopping us from making the best healthy choices that are right for us. One, a lack of healthy options, and two, not enough evidence to back up scientific evidence claims about whether or not these foods are actually healthy for us. There's been a breakdown in communication and trust between food companies and the general public. Trust is at an all-time low. Incredibly, 80% of Dutch and German consumers don't trust what they read on food labels. And this has led to huge confusion. The majority of consumers now no longer understand or believe nutritional information. And yet, it's a huge irony that now is the time where people are most open-minded about new diets, new cuisines, trying out new things. It's a huge problem. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is good science. Basically, what we need instead of food fads are facts. We need to improve the way that we do nutritional research and generate evidence that can prove to people that foods and their food claims are actually working. It's been found that scientific claims are much more persuasive than other food claims. And that's where we come in. We're Nightingale Health. We're from Finland. We're a startup. We're a biotech company that's in innovated a new type of blood testing technology. And this technology really lends itself to understanding and revealing how diet and lifestyle can impact on your risk of certain types of lifestyle-related diseases. So for example, finding out if somebody is at risk of type 2 diabetes or heart disease and giving them an indication to make a change, to make a difference before those diseases have developed. So how does it work? Well, basically what it is, is a new type of blood testing technology. So when you go to a GP or your doctor, you normally have a cholesterol test. And in that test, it measures a small handful of biomarkers, molecules that reveal whether or not a disease is developing. Now, when you have a cholesterol test, it's usually three or four different markers. What our technology does is it generates over 228 molecular measures. 
So a huge upgrade in the amount of information about your health. And that means that we can help people to understand if they're at risk of certain diseases much earlier on. The technology uses um, basically a, a huge magnet. It's a little bit like an MRI machine. You put the blood sample into the machine. It generates a magnetic wave, and then we use AI and big data to reveal what these molecules actually mean for your health. Um, and this lends itself to really working in partnership with lots of big food companies because what we can do is we can help food to basically prove whether or not new types of food products actually work and have health benefits. By combining our blood test with our platform and huge kind of biobank data that we've been involved with, we can find out if food is actually working best for individuals. Um, this is a little bit complex, but obviously um, if you want to find out more, please come find me afterwards and I can explain how it works in a little bit more detail. But basically the outcome is to generate evidence to back up food claims. Um, and we're already working with um, some leaders in the food industry. So we're working, we've been working with FATSA, one of the biggest uh, food companies in the Nordics. Last year, FATSA approached us to work um, on a project to validate the health claims of a new type of product that they've been developing called Brain Food, a food intervention that's basically been designed to be healthier for your cognitive ability. We analyzed all the data and the results are actually going to come out at the end of the month in a, in a food conference, scientific conference in the Netherlands. But it was amazing how using our technology streamlined the process, created less burden on the volunteers involved and actually produced results within a shorter time frame as four weeks. But changing the way that we do food research is just the first, first step. We know that the future is personalized nutrition. And interestingly enough, consumer attitudes are already changing when it comes to this area. 42% of consumers in the UK are willing and prepared to use a DNA-based diet to try and change the way that they do things. The problem is that DNA is static. It doesn't actually work in terms of dietary uh, dietary advice and the largest most rigorous study that used that compared head-to-head -head DNA diets versus conventional diets found no difference in weight change so what we need is to combine DNA along with other big data and that big data could include Nightingale's information which changes on a daily basis and reveals how individuals respond to different diets we can empower individuals to take control of their health and reveal their own personalized nutrition goals. Thank you very much. Um, and we're here today to talk to food industry contacts that would be interested in piloting and finding out more about our technology. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Eric from No Fence. Pleasure to be here. Everyone has heard the question uh, about how are we going to feed the world? That has, of course, a lot of different answers. Here is our perspective on that one. Uh, we have a huge untapped resource on the planet. And you can see it here. It's trees. It's grass. Uh, and only, only livestock, cows, sheep, and goats are able to turn trees and grass into human food. They give us milk and they give us meat. So, uh, today we are feeding our livestock grass and soybeans grown on areas where uh, we could have found uh, human food directly. So, here's our solution. I'm not sure if this is going to play, but in case not. Uh, what we ha what we have done we have we have made a, a virtual fence for animals because the biggest problem to utilize uh, all these areas is the difficulty to make fences out in in the forest it's extremely expensive and labor intensive for the farmers so with our solution farmer has suddenly the opportunity to to just make all kind of fences wherever he want and as big as he wants. So, if you put this one on the animals, the farmer can easily guide the animals around. Can do strip grazing or rotational grazing easily. 
on top of that, we are collecting a lot of data. So we are able to 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 give insight for the farmers. Uh, this is in fact all uh, the units now operating in Norway. Over 5,300 units is now uh, on uh, goats, sheep, and cows in Norway. Um, uh, yesterday, 60,000 hours of grazing were done just in one day with our solution. So, so here is one of the data sets that we can provide to the farmers. They can see where the animals have been uh, going. For example, uh, if the grass is eaten up, they are pushing the borders. The farmer can easily expand in the app. This is a huge potential in our business case. Uh, for example, if we reach 1% uh, uh, penetration of our target markets, we will sell for 1 billion in hardware and uh, 227 million in uh, annual recurring revenue. So, we are not fundraising at the moment, but uh, uh, in, in, a, in a one year we are going to raise our Series A. So, we are here to connect with the investors that uh, see the potential in our case. Please reach out. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm Stein uh, from Norway. I've lived uh, 12 years in Finland and now I'm in Sweden to find investors. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of, uh, CEO of Evia Health. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I met the professor Clayton Christensen that said one had a big impact on me and he said, do the right thing. And uh, I thought, Solving health problems with nutrition is the right thing, and that's basically what Avia Health is all about. Um, we um, target very specific health problems uh, with uh, um, trying to solve them, and we do that by using um, bioactive extracts from uh, plant material. Everything we do is based on organic material, sustainable. We uh, extract from uh, waste streams from wood, we use berry materials, we use mushroom material. Uh, for instance, berries in uh, Finland, there's about 500 million kilo growing in the forest every year. In Sweden, 800 million. Only uh, 10 or 15 million is actually collected. R the rest is left in the forest. And the birds and the beer don't take that much. So, uh, what we uh, do is that we uh, document the health effect and I'll give you an example of one problem that we are trying to solve. So one problem we are targeting is AMD. It's an age-related uh, macular degeneration. It's a terrible condition. It's a progressive eye health condition uh, which uh, basically eventually leads to blindness or legal blindness. It's the main cause of blindness in the US uh, and uh, Basically, when you get it, it affects every part of life, driving, cooking, reading. If you live in India or in China, uh, your life expectancy will drop dramatically. So you don't want to get it, and basically our focus in everything we do is on prevention or prophylactics. We are trying to prevent the onset or the development of uh, pathological conditions, such as AMD. And what our product does is that um, we have a wood extract which induces the autophagy response in your body. Every one of you have cells that are having the autophagy response. Uh, three years ago there was a professor, Professor Oshumi, he got the Nobel Prize here in Sweden, here in Stockholm, in medicine for uh, uh, finding the autophagy response. And basically what it does is it cleans out the remnants, protein precipitates, you know, it degrades and, and cleans out your cells. However, when you get older, this autophagy response slows down and you start accumulating material in your cells, for instance, protein precipitates. And particularly protein precipitates causes various type of health problems, uh, such as AMD. So when protein starts accumulating in your RPE cells, your re retinal pigmentelial epithelium cells in the retina, you develop basically the condition of AMD. So we can prevent the onset of that by speeding up the autophagy process. And uh, about 200 million people are affected, so it's a large global problem. Um, otherwise, we as a business are working on a B2B 
uh, business model. So we have selected distributors in uh, the selected markets. We are working in the US, we're working in South Korea and in Australia. And uh, basically selling to blue chip companies like Mercola, Garden of Life, Blackmores, uh, Simrise and so forth. And we're already in the market to be these companies. We have a very, very strong team. Our chairman of the board is Swedish, uh, and I uh, have uh, with me really good guys like Petri Lachman. He's the leading, one of the leading guys in Finland in the so-called secondary metabolites, basically the defense, uh, pro the, uh, the pr products that are in plants that are creating the, the bio effect in humans. Yes, so I think I skipped that one. Uh, we are just right now having a lot of demand. We uh, grew from half a million in 2017 till uh, one and a half million last year. We'll do about three million this year. We'll break even now. Uh, and uh, we could basically sign sales orders for 10 million this year if we had the capacity. So a very strong demand for products that are already in the market, such as uh, interesting products like proanthocyanidins from lingonberry, uh, anthocyanins from bilberry, and so forth. Um, we're looking for uh, a small bridge round of 400,000 euro now, uh, just to break profit and to grab these uh, larger contracts. And probably then there will be a scaling round next year in order to scale up the factory to, uh, to do a lot, much larger production and grow very, very rapidly over the next four years. So I'm very happy if someone is interested to talk to us. Thank you. Uh, I'm from Johannes Urban Farms, and um, uh, I don't know if you noticed this morning, somebody asked, um, will the people in food figure out tech before the people in tech figuring out food? How's that going to happen? And uh, uh, we actually believe that you get the benefits when you combine the two. So we're a team of IT uh, entrepreneurs, uh, we have Anke Johanna standing there, she's a grower, um, we have mechanical engineers, we have you know, uh, farm owner, etc. as part of our team. So what do we do? Uh, we grow food locally uh, in circular systems called aquaponics, you heard about PECAS maybe a little bit earlier today, um, which are more environmentally friendly than the ways we produce f uh, fish and vegetables today. Uh, so why do we do this? Um, our seas are getting empty, essentially. Uh, we're taking uh, you know, traditional hunter-gatherer methods and emptying our seas by with indu industrial methods. Uh, we are, uh, in Sweden, we import 80% of the vegetables that we eat. Uh, we also import 80% of the fish that we eat. Uh, on top of that, we dump an awful lot of food waste. Um, uh, and this is not the food waste that gets disappeared out of your kitchen. This is, happens before it even gets to the consumer. So three, four hundred thousand tons of food gets just wasted in Sweden. Um, in uh, the worldwide, you've heard the numbers, probably today, 30% of food is uh, that's produced is waste. Um, in Europe, the estimate is that over half, so 56% of fruit and vegetables is thrown away before it's actually used. Um, that seems a bit of a, a shame and an underused resource. So what are we doing? Um, we're, uh, we're in the middle of building our first pilot installation uh, in Valentuna, which is just north here of Stockholm, um, of an aquaponics installation for fish and uh, vegetables. And um, it uses the traditional method of actually having fish in the production system where you grow things together with the bacteria that converts the fish waste into nutrients that the plants use. Uh, which means that you can um, avoid taking in uh, artificial uh, fertilizers, uh, you get high benefits from the bacteria themselves that actually support, plants, support the plants in growing. Uh, but we don't stop there. Um, uh, we're going to take that pile of plant and we're going to scale it to something large next year, so we'll be raising funds at the end of the year. Uh, but we don't stop there. So we've been looking, we've been looking at this um, to see how can we take 
a small circular system, which an aquaponics system, our production system, and how can we make that into, s into something bigger? And that bigger thing is taking the food waste as well. So if you actually, uh, you have, you know, the food waste, food waste consists of, you know, up to half of what you consume if you're a vegetarian. Uh, that can be taken back in to the production cycle through insects, for example. Uh, we have a collaboration now with uh, Tibrito uh, and SLU, Swedish Agriculture University, uh, to look at how can we take the food waste and actually produce fish food for, for that, um, and then closing that circle. So we're a dozen companies uh, working on this together to take this opportunity of creating local food uh, here, uh, 365 days a year, um, and not necessarily taking your traditional uh, agricultural land, etc., to produce it. So we have indoor uh, farms to do this work. So anyway, um, the key, what are we looking for? We're looking for uh, other organizations that are interested in taking part of this, uh, and we're also looking for investors in the future, uh, so it's good that you, that you know that we exist. So, thank you very much. Hi, my name is Robert, founder and CEO of Viltus, and we're eliminating waste in farming. So the problem we see in agriculture today is that about 55% of the most used fertilizer, nitrogen, is going to waste as a result of very inefficient farming practices. This results in a lot of environmental degradation as well as economic harm. We address this problem by giving farmers recommendations for the optimized distribution of nitrogen fertilizers by analyzing satellite imagery and applying spectral analysis in various algorithms. This directly uh, it plugs into existing hardware and automatically varies the output of fertilizers when you're driving across the field. As a result, you can improve your, your yields by about 3%. You can reduce the use of nitrogen by up to 30% and gain about 35 euros per hectare. Uh, furthermore, you have a very significant reduction in CO2 emissions uh, because you have much less emissions of nitrous oxide. We have a quite unique business model in that we sell business to business to various digital farming platforms. Now, this is a very fast growing market uh, that's now most medium and large sized farmers have a digital platform they use. We basically enable these platforms to get more revenues from their farmers and uh, get have a better competitive position in the market. So one example is we have a farming platform with 7 million hectares and uh, we sell our they sell our product for about 5 euros per hectare. So for them, this is about a 35 million euro opportunity just by selling our module on their platform. Um, and this is significantly higher than their existing products. So this business model is working really well. Um, and we have we, we launched the service uh, at the end of January this year. And we now have six contracts signed. And we have about 100% um, month over month growth in the usage. So we have over 100,000 hectares using the product right now. Uh, and it's growing significantly. We are quite unique in that we have achieved a high level of automation in our product, uh, which makes it very easy to use the service and makes it quite cheap and scalable to deploy. Uh, this is compared to existing competition that primarily exists of these sort of expert services where an expert make, makes a recommendation, or these generic services that makes the f requires the farmer to make the recommendations themselves. So we bridge that gap by automating it. We have a team of 11 people from seven different countries. Our competencies are very strong within remote sensing, programming, and business-to-business -business sales, as those are sort of the, the key things we need. We're now looking for a seed round of about a million euros, uh, and this will help us scale to 12 countries. Uh, we're targeting a MRR of about 150,000 euros, and we're spending a significant amount on further development uh, to reduce other inputs. We're, we've secured about half of this round and uh, are looking for further investors for the other half. So join us in our vision to eliminate waste in farming. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Kalle Söderman, and I'm the CEO and founder of Ingredient Matcher. And the problem we're trying to solve here is something that is uh, commonly for many people of us for many people 
uh, for many days during a week. What should we have for dinner, right? So 70 to 80 percent of all people don't know what they will have for dinner for the same day, if you ask them. And uh, an ordinary family in Sweden uh, goes around with only 10 recipes during a year, over and over again. And 45 kilos of food is wasted by one person uh, each year in Swedish households. So, uh, what we are all trying to strive for is to find that perfect dinner. Uh, we want something that is tasty, yet healthy. And we want something that is quick and cheap. And we want something that is available right now. And we want something uh, with our own personal preferences, if we have allergies or diets, etc. So combining all of these, it's sort of an impossible equation, right? Uh, and there are different ways on how you can tackle this, uh, finding that perfect dinner. Uh, it depends on how you are as a person and how you prioritize. There are, uh, for example, uh, where we stand is people that are more cost conscious and more health conscious, as well as people that are uh, not that uh, uh, inspirational in the kitchen, not that kitchen wizard, uh, and a little bit more spontaneous than planning. Those are the people that we target. So the solution, solution we have is an app that shows you which recipes you can make based on the ingredients you already have at home. So when you start, you will get a list of common ingredients that most people have at home, and you just go through that. It takes three minutes, and then you're up and running. What you then do is to find those recipes that you can make based on those ingredients you have. And in those recipes, you can directly see which ingredients you have, and you can update what you have directly in a recipe. So when you're, once you're browsing, you keep updating your uh, what you have at home. And also you can, from the recipe, send ingredients to your shopping list. And if you're using the shopping list, it will also keep your inventory up to date. So where we are now, we have already started with, uh, getting some partnerships. Uh, we have Helsingsjök, Vegme, and we have a couple of more uh, to get uh, recipes, more recipes into the database. And we have some food bloggers already signed up, so we will get their uh, recipe collections in the app as well. And we started have having users. So, upcoming for us is that we will uh, try to find more partners, more food bloggers. And uh, we want to get more recipes into the app. We're developing an Android version, because now it's only in iOS. And in that, we'll also upgrade the design and UX. And we will continue with uh, increasing uh, the functionality so that we can enable our business model. And I'll not go into that because we have several business models. Uh, and we want to get more users. That's the next step after summer. So your turn then. What you can do? One thing, download the app if you have the Swedish App Store. Secondly, come and talk to me, uh, either here or if you just connect with me on LinkedIn and we can talk later on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Hamza. Um, I am the founder of EcoBloom. We're an ag tech company based here in Stockholm, Sweden. And I'm here to talk about the future of farming. As uh, many of you already know, feeding the world is becoming increasingly challenging. And especially with a growing population that is expected to be almost 10 billion people by 2050. So uh, that requires us to produce more food in the coming four decades than we have in the past 8,000 years. So with a diminishing amount of farmable land and uh, a growing population, indoor farming can help with the challenges that lie ahead. It will, be a key, it will play a key role in the future uh, of, of meeting the needs of producing more food. However, as promising as it might be, uh, there are many challenges that we need to overcome. And our solution to overcoming these challenges is the EcoSense. It is a uh, modular data cultivation management system powered by AI. It's our very own 21st century farmer in a black box. And it utilizes computer vision to uh, uh, update you uh, and give you the status of your indoor farm through our developed neural network. And it combines automation with plant tracking and through precision farming, we can increase um, uh, the farmer's yields, reduce their costs and optimize their profitability, taking complete care of their indoor farm and food production. 
It is based on a SaaS model uh, while allowing us to tailor each package to fit the farmer's needs. So if you're a big commercial farmer or a small hobbyist, you can use the solution and it takes us just over three weeks to cover the hardware cost of the EcoSense based on the basic package, which is $9 a month. So how can we scale and ensure scalability? Well, we're tapping into several markets using the same IoT solution. And while doing so, we're able to create a global data hub and a network of connected urban farmers. We're tapping into a 130 plus billion market, US dollar market. And we recently launched our very first Wi-Fi connected micro farm. It's an intelligent ecosystem that allows you to grow fresh and organic food all year round while being able to monitor and control the whole growing process right from your phone. And if you're too lazy, you can control it using voice assistant as well. So we have sold over 400 micro farms to people around the world and we've raised over 1.2 million sec in the past few months in sales. We, the nerds, are a bunch of uh, um, uh, you know, experts in machine learning, um, uh, product development, design and marketing, and we are constantly growing and we're just the other week accepted to EIT's Food Accelerator as well. And we have positive financial projections and world-renowned partners, and we have just in the past 24 hours raised over 20,000 sec in sales. We are currently part of a seed round looking to raise 3.5 million sec in order to really give us a 16 plus month long runway as well as maximize on our recent momentum, scale the team and optimize our AI powered solutions. If you are interested in being part of this growing revolution, let's talk. Thank you. I can share some professional features. <laughs> Uh, so I'm Emma, one of the founders of, e of EpiShine. We are developing a new kind of solar cell. It's an organic solar cell that has been developed through 25 uh, years of research. Uh, and currently we are powering wireless products indoors at a launching pad for our mission to provide the most scalable, resource efficient and affordable solar modules in the world. Uh, so the problem we are facing is that with the Internet of Things there will be trillions of sensors and all of those sensors needs to be powered. And today you can do that with batteries, but those needs to be replaced after some years and it becomes a real logistic nightmare when there are millions of them that you need to replace. Uh, and this is why the market is looking for battery-free IoT, which you can get by replacing uh, the battery with a, sensor, with a solution that are able to use the energy that is already around the sensor, such as light. Uh, so what we have developed is a light energy harvesting solution that is optimized uh, to work indoors. So a solar cell that is not using sun, but uh, LED and fluorescent lamps indoors to convert light into electricity. Uh, we print the solar cells, so they're very thin and flexible, uh, like a paper, and easily integrated into products, uh, such as in this, temperature sensors. Uh, we can make them any voltage in any form that you would like, and they are working in very, very dark environments, uh, down to 10 lux, uh, where your living room is about 200 lux. Uh, <coughs> So we provide value by either, either eliminate, eliminate the batteries completely or extend the battery lifetime uh, or uh, provide augmented functionality to the sensor. Uh, in uh, this case, uh, we have integrated our sensors into um, a temperature sensor for cold storage. And here our solution becomes even more um, competitive since batteries lose up to 75% of their capacity in freezers where there is minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, together with Tempanline, which is uh, our commercial partner in this case, we have integrated a sensor series at Ica. Uh, and this sensor ser series is uh, powered completely with the indoor light that is in the grocery store. Uh, so if you have uh, temperature sensors that you are battery driven and uh, want a sustainable solution that also saves you money, or if you have other wireless products that you think should be powered with your indoor light, uh, then feel free to contact me or if you have other, any other questions. Thanks. <laughs>